Welcome to Talk 1260 KTRC. You're listening to The Humanity Behind the Vanity, a show about plastic surgery and other things. And um, today we have a very special guest, Dr. Maria Rodriguez, a gynecologist in Santa Fe. And we are going to talk about something I wanted to talk about for a long time. Dr. Rodriguez and I were doing a case together the other day, and this topic came up. Vaginal rejuvenation. She's the only one who does it. In Santa Fe. Yes. And as a gynecologist, there is nobody better exactly. to do it. And I get calls for this all the time, and I refer them out. So I'm so happy you're here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel and Betsy, for having me. We're so happy you're here. I'm very excited about uh, offering vaginal rejuvenation to the state of New Mexico. As far as I know, at the moment, I am the only one uh, in the state trained to do this procedure. Yeah. So, um, again, starting out in Santa Fe, I hope to expand even to Albuquerque at some point. Great. Before we forget, how do people reach you? What is your phone number? Uh, my phone number is 505-989-3870. Where are you located? In, uh, at 1691 Galisteo. And uh, I have a website. It's uh, www.NewMexicoVaginoplasty. That's V A G I N O P L A S T Y uh, dot and com. Is it N M vaginoplasty? Yes, okay. N M. Uh -huh. No, actually, it's New Mexico. Oh, the whole thing spelled, spelled out. out. Yeah. Okay, good. That's good. great. So, um, tell us what is vaginoplasty? Well, uh, let's start out with the term vaginal rejuvenation. There have been many terms given to this type of surgery. And, uh, you know, the, the people who do this type of surgery still are trying to figure out what common words to use. But I think the word vaginal rejuvenation is what most of us are using at this point. And it encompasses uh, various procedures. Uh, probably the two most common procedures are vaginoplasty, which is tightening the vaginal canal, and labiaplasty, which is making the labia or the lips of the vagina uh, trimmer or made smaller, uh, depending on the patient's choice. And uh, there are a few other areas that are done. Uh, one is called clitoral hood reduction for women who have a lot of excess tissue over the clitoris. Uh, some people are doing something called a G-spot amplification to enhance the sensation in the area of the G-spot. So uh, again, it depends on what the patient's needs are and, uh, you know, what procedures that she wants to have done. Yeah. What is the most common one you do? Uh, the vaginoplasty and the labiaplasty. Mm -hmm. And a vaginoplasty is basically taking a large tunnel and just tightening it up and making it smaller? Yes. And, and the idea, too, is really important to tighten the entire uh, tunnel of the vagina. Some people claim to do vaginoplasty and they will only tighten the outer portion or the very entrance mm. to the vagina. Yeah. And in order to really increase the, the friction for the woman uh, during intercourse, you really have to tighten the entire uh, vaginal canal. And this happens, the uh, canal gets enlarged because of childbirth or women just made that way? I mean, it's mainly through childbirth. Okay. 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 Interesting. And what about the labiaplasty? The labiaplasty, uh, again, gets very stretched out during childbirth. And, uh, you know, after women are done having their children, uh, some of them just feel really uncomfortable with the appearance of the, yeah. of the vulva and want to have a more pleasing appearance. Um, one thing I want to clarify is that uh, a lot of people think that you might want to tighten the vagina for the male partner. Right. But in reality, it's really the women uh, mm -hmm. who, who tell me that they don't have as much sensation in the vagina during intercourse. And so they're really doing it for themselves. Now, it is a, a second benefit, you know, to have the partner uh, enjoy this as well, but it really is primarily for the, the female. Interesting, because you're right. The common uh, thought is, oh, I'm going to do it for my husband, or men will like it. And no, it's for the women. So that's very uh, enlightening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where are the procedures performed? Uh, in my office. That's yeah, these are, these are done in that's my great. office that's with. Uh, local anesthesia. Mm -hmm. We also do some uh, cream on the labia an hour before right. to decrease the sensation. Right. And they also take oral pain medication. Um, so they're monitored throughout the, the procedure. Uh, their vital signs are monitored, but I 
really don't need even to have an IV. No. Right, right. We've talked a lot about what's safe and not safe to mm -hmm. do in the office. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a fine line between conscious sedation and you know, doing procedures that don't require sedation. And that's the category that yours fall in, which is really convenient because the patients don't have to pay an OR and an anesthesia fee. Yes. Exactly. And um, is this something that is covered by insurance? Uh, generally not covered by insurance uh, if it's being done for aesthetic reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone has a, a really unusual situation, uh, a real asymmetry to the vaginal lips, uh, sometimes you can get insurance coverage. Uh, in some cases, if the vaginal lips are very large, uh, patients will be really uncomfortable sitting, and sometimes they'll even have pain in the area. Mm -hmm. And in those cases, you can get insurance coverage most of the time. Right. Okay. So let's. So we didn't finish. Let's talk about the labiaplasty. Okay. What? What? Who? I mean, it gets stretched out from childbirth. It can also just be the way a woman has developed over time. What are, other than pain? Are there any other personal reasons women might want to uh, rejuvenate the lips? A, a lot of its appearance, cosmetic okay. appearance, uh, is primarily the reason. Okay. It really uh, improves their self-esteem, yeah. and uh, you know this procedure is not for everyone, but there definitely uh, are women out there who really feel that, that this procedure would help them. Oh, absolutely. Right. What about the downtime for the whole procedure? Well, actually, the uh, the procedure itself can take anywhere from two to three hours. Okay. But the downtime afterwards uh, probably is about a week. Oh. Uh, you know, there's a restriction on lifting. There's a restriction on when they can have intercourse. But in terms of going back to work, uh, really, probably within a week to two weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. um, Good. Interesting. Here's a question. Just um, do you offer financing, patient financing? Yes, we do. Okay, excellent. excellent. That's good, huge. good. It makes a lot of difference. That's very important. And right. there's also a, a percentage off if patients pay uh, in cash. Sure. Right. Well, yes, we do have financing. Mm -hmm. That's great. All right, just give the contact information right now before we take a break one more time. Yes. It's uh, www.NewMexicoVaginalPlasty.com. All spelled out. And the phone number is 505-989-3870. And we're talking with Dr. Maria Rodriguez, a Santa Fe... Board certified. Board certified. Absolutely. She's the only one in the state trained to do this. And yes. we'll be right back. And there may be well, other people. I just wanted to say, we talk a lot about who's qualified to do procedures and who's not qualified. She is qualified. This is the... 100%. Right. This is the, This is who you should be going to. This is who to. you should be going to. Absolutely. Wanted to thank our uh, sponsors, Suniva Medical, <coughs> excuse me, the makers of Artifil, and IFLO, the makers of the Pain Buster. And uh, we're going to take a short break and listen to a great spiritual tip from Dr. Scott Thomas. And then we'll be right back to talk with Dr. Yeah. Maria Rodriguez some more.